to the Fitchburg City Council meeting of January 7th. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, please be advised, FATV is conducting audio and video recording of this meeting for public broadcast. And for this first meeting, I will lead the salute to the flag. He's doing the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, if you'd like to call the roll. The following counselors have logged in and are present at this evening's meeting. President Sorella, Councillor Boschman, Councillor Kucher. Councillor Di Natale, Councillor Fleming, Councillor Green, Councillor Kushmirik, Councillor Schultz, Councillor Squalia, Councillor Van Hazinga, and Councillor Walsh. Thank you. At this time, I would like to request unanimous consent to suspend all rules of this body or of our parliamentary authority that are in conflict with the remote participation format or with the state's guidelines on remote participation during the COVID-19 pandemic. If there is no objection. One objection. Uh, one objection from Councillor Boschman. Uh, in that case, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Oh, uh, wait, do I have a second on that motion then? Second. Thank you. Uh, having a motion and second on the suspension of the rules, Madam Clerk. President Sorella. Yes. Councillor Boschman? No. Councillor Kucher? Yes. Councillor Di Natale? Yes. Councillor Fleming? Councillor Fleming? Here, sorry, I was muted. That's it, thank you. Councillor Green? Yes. Councillor Kushmerik? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Squalia? Aye. Councillor Van Hazinga? Yes. Councillor Walsh? Yes. That is 10 to one. Thank you, the motion carries. Uh, the public has been advised to contact the city clerk's office by noon today regarding any comments of more than two of no more than two minutes and none have been brought to our attention. However, we do have a request from the city treasurer and Cervantes regarding suspension of the rules on 004, 2021. I do not, however, see Treasurer Cervantes here. She'll be joining the meeting shortly. Oh, there she is. Good evening, Ms. Cervantes. Uh, we were just recognizing you on your request for suspension. Would you like to address the council? No. Okay. Oh, there you are. There we go. So sorry about that. No problem at all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, I, I'm asking for suspension of the, the, the rules this evening um, because I actually um, I'm hoping to meet with the state next week to request participation in the state qualified bond program. Um, and we need I need the city council to uh, pass this resolution this evening um, it, in order to be uh, in order to qualify to participate in, uh, or to apply for the program next week. Oh, for suspension of zero. Second. All right, second. I have a motion and second on suspension. Uh, can I please have a roll call vote? President Sorella. Yes. Councilor Boschman. Yes. Councilor Kucher. Yes. Councilor Di Natale. Yes. Councilor Fleming. Yes. Councilor Green. Yes. Councilor Kushmirik. Yes. Councilor Schultz. Yes. Councillor Squalia. Aye. Councillor Van Hazinga. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. That is unanimous. The, mo the matter is now before the council. Move, Move to, to adopt. 0421. Second. Second. All right. And may I ask for unanimous consent on this motion? Seeing no objection, the motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will now hear a 
report from the appointments committee. Uh, Councilor Van Hazinga. Thank you, Mr. President. Earlier this evening, the appointments committee met to hear uh, three reappointments to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mr. Joseph Byrne, ex term to expire January 1, 2022. Ms. Lauren M McNamara, term to expire January 1, 2023. And Mr. Michael McLaughlin, term to expire January 1, 2024. We also heard a, um, a, the new appointment of an associate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Ms. Jean Hudson, term to expire June 1, 2021. The appointments committee voted five to zero to approve the appointments. Thank you. The report is the motion council. I'm sorry. Second. Make a motion. We accept. Second. I have a motion and second to accept. If there are no objections, the report is accepted. Uh, we will now hear a report from the committee on records. Councilor Squalia. We have reviewed the records and they appear to be in order. The motion we accept. Second. If there is no objection, seeing none, the report is accepted. Uh, before we go to the communications portion of the evening, if the council will indulge me, I'd like to make a brief statement. I didn't wish to start off my term as president with anything political, but certain moments in history cannot go unremarked upon. So I will attempt to keep this brief. Yesterday, our democracy came under attack. Armed insurrectionists entered the Capitol building by force with the intent of coercing our legislature to obey their will rather than the law and four people are dead. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. I don't care if you think the election was fair or not, although the unanimity of the courts across the country speaks strongly to that issue. As Americans, we should all be agreed that using violence to try to subvert the political process is despicable, inexcusable, and yes, un-American. Here in Fitchburg and on this council, we should count our blessings and recommit ourselves to uphold our consistent tradition of working together for the good of the city without thought for partisan divisions. And now as Vice President Pence said to the Senate, let's get back to work. Thank you. We have a communication from his honor, the mayor, an appointment letter for Mr. Mark F. Christian as a member of the Conservation Committee term uh, Commission term to expire January 1st, 2024. That will be sent to the Appointments Committee. Uh, we have a communication from the Pension Reserves Investment Management Board, uh, which will be placed on file in the City Clerk's Office unless there is objection. Seeing none, it is uh, so filed. And we have a communication from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Public Employment Employee Retirement Administration Commission, which will also be placed on file with the clerk, uh, seeing no objection. We now have orders finance uh, 00321 ordered that the city of Fitchburg hereby approves the expenditure of funds from the Crocker Field Restoration Committee in the approximate amount of $17,600 for the purpose of said gift, which is for the Crocker Field concrete rehabilitation at the grandstands and that is referred to finance. Uh, we have Petition 00521, Fitchburg Planning Board to amend the Fitchburg Zoning Ordinance. That will be referred to the Planning Board, Community Development, and the Legislative Affairs Committee. I would ask uh, that it also be referred to economic development, uh, unless there is objection. Seeing none, it is referred to the those uh, listed committees. 
00621 Unitil Fitchburg Gas and Electric Company for a proposed new pole number 15, approximately 45 feet north of existing pole 14 at the intersection of Industrial Road and Westminster Hill Road. If there is no objection, that will be set for public hearing on February 2nd. Seeing none. Uh, and we have an item for discussion, uh, petition 2920, a further uh, zoning amendment. Uh, we do have Tom Skorowski here to speak to us on that matter, uh, but I do just want to note for the council that this will be referred to a public hearing on January 19th. Mr. Skorowski. Good evening, councilors. Um, I'll be brief tonight, but I just wanted to give you an update on where the zoning work sits because uh, we, we do have some complicated work ahead of us. Um, as I think you all recall in, in the fall, um, the council had voted on phase one, which was really the foundational components of our changes. It's pretty simple stuff, just dotting I's, crossing T's, making sure our ordinance reads better. Um, phase two is a lot more complicated. If phase one's foundational, phase two is the transformative. Um, and because of that, there are really different bundles that we need to be breaking this up into. Um, I think our original thought was to have three discrete public hearings that were open and closed for each bundle successively. Um, and I think after holding the first legislative affairs meeting um, and holding the first um, planning board hearing for bundle one, um, and after many conversations with folks both in this room and at the planning board, it seems prudent um, to instead have one public hearing um, that is kept open over the course of the entire deliberation. So what this will basically look like um, for each of the three bundles, there will be a, you know, a, a meeting where deliberations are made and um, decisions are, are voted upon, but then the hearing is kept open until um, the next meeting. And, and in between each city council meeting, there'll be a planning board recommendation, and then there will be the city council committees, both economic development and legislative affairs deliberating on these topics. Um, but it, what this will do is also eliminate one kind of arbitrary um, step in the process, which is planning board has to otherwise submit a petition to you all to get submitted back to them for a meeting, it's uh, an unnecessary step and it complicates things a bit. So anyway, you know, in January 19th, the first bundle of that phase will be discussed with the council and hopefully votes will be taken, but then we can keep things open uh, and further deliberate on the next bundle in February. And then the aim will be to close things out in early March. So I just wanted to give you all sort of a viewpoint of the steps ahead. Uh, happy to take any questions, but otherwise, uh, look forward to seeing you on the 19th. Thank you very much. Councillor Green? Yes, I'm sorry. While I have you, uh, Mr. Strowski, in front of us, do you foresee um, those public meetings being held via a Zoom platform, or are we going to move forward with trying to get into our legislative building and operate business from that location? That's a, a good question. And it's something that's really complicated this whole um, process. And I, I appreciate the council's willingness to, it, it's been messy, uh, messier than I think it would have been if it were in person. And, and you know, certainly the, new guidelines that Governor Baker had extended, you know, originally, I think until January 10th, the limit of in-person meetings was, I think, 10 people. Um, and now that limit from January 10th has been extended to the end of the month, um, or roughly, I, I, I'm a bit mm -hmm. foggy on dates here, but at least for this first bundle, it would make it, uh, I think, difficult to follow the governor's guidelines while holding a, an in-person meeting. I think it's something we could revisit in February and March. Um, and certainly this stuff is easier when we're talking about it in person, no question. Okay, thank you for that. I And I, again, appreciate um, all the work that you and your team are putting forward to uh, keep us moving in the forward direction. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you all for working with us on it. 
All right. Uh, on January 19th. I'm sorry, was that a motion? Yeah, to refer petition 2922 public hearing, January 19th. Excellent, okay. thank you. I have a motion and a second to refer to public hearing on January 19th, 2021. Speaking on the motion, if there is no objection, we'll pass that by unanimous consent. Seeing none, it is the hearing date is set. And that concludes our agenda for this evening. Motion to adjourn. Any announcements? Any, Anthony, any announcements? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. I apologize. Uh, I have, if you'll give me a moment. Um, a letter from, no, oh, just a moment. It's not opening properly on my computer. Ah, there we go. Um, a letter from a local Boy Scout who is working on his Eagle Scout project, um, who is working with the city on a public, uh, public service project. Uh, this was written to Councillor Schultz who forwarded it to me and I am happy to provide it to the council. Dear Ward 1 Councillor Schultz, my name is Patrick McWalter, a resident of Fitchburg and a Life Scout with Lemster Troop 12. I am writing to you about my Eagle Scout project, which involves Ward 1 and safety. Seeing as you are a resident and Councillor of Ward 1, I felt it important to share this information with you. Back in December, I decided I wanted to make the Fitchburg Fire Department my focus of the project. I thought, what could I do? So I presented my project idea, Hydrant Reflectors, to the Scout Committee. In doing my research, I looked at the whole city and decided to only do Ward 1. I have already talked to Chief Marama, who talked to the Water Department, and everyone's on board. I have enlightened the mayor with my intent, and he is in support of my idea. The hydrants in Ward 1 that currently do not have pole reflectors will be outfitted with ones that I raise funds for. There are approximately 150 hydrants that do not have a reflector pole. After the fundraising, I will have several small groups of scouts, adults, and fire people help me to install the pole ref reflectors on the fire hydrants. With the water department's help, I was able to secure the company's name, H.R. Prescott and Sons out of West Boylston, and the size pole the city requires. With all my hard work, I am able to move forward as my project has been approved. I wanted to share my anticipated timeline Fundraising will begin at some point in January and end in March. The hydrants will be outfitted with reflectors in April. I hope you are excited, as excited as I am to support the Fitchburg Fire Department and make the citizens of Ward 1 safer. Sincerely, Patrick McWalter. Nice. I think that's an excellent project. Councillor Green? Um, I would just like to say that this will be the, I think, fifth consecutive year that um, young Patrick McWalter has done um, community projects through his Scouts project. Um, I don't know if you remember last year, he worked on the McTaggart's Dam um, project through, the, through scouting. And um, I've done some research. So the reflectors themselves are $16 a piece. So for... 150 that's needed uh, he's going to need to raise about $2,400 so I would encourage you know if and you know counselors ward counselors residents um, could help even with sponsoring one or two of those that we should be able to um, get that project well underway for him to start and complete so I'm excited about working with him again on another scouts project thank you absolutely uh, Councilor Schultz yeah, I just want to say I'll try to keep everyone informed. I, I talked to Patrick uh, the other day on the phone, and uh, he's going to let us know when the fundraising is going to begin. So uh, I'll keep everybody informed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I have a uh, counselor. I think Councillor Kucher got in first. <laughs> just really quick, Bernie. Yeah, uh, let me know where I can donate to this kid. Okay. And Vice President Walsh? Uh, yeah, that was my question. Is, is, is there any um, information or a place that we can, if people are, are interested in, in donating, where they would like to send it? 
Yeah, I don't, I don't have that information yet, uh, Councilor Walsh, but as soon as I get it, I'll, I'll forward it to the council. Excellent, thank you. Councilor Green, do you have something else? I'll, I'll, no, I don't, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that said, I had a motion and second to adjourn. If there are no objections, we are adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Happy New Thank Year, you. everyone. New Year. Happy New Year.